this is the place that you, you were supposed to be. Like, this is where you were supposed to go. Yeah, yeah. Prison is the best thing that's ever happened to me, really. I need to know that the fire is gonna burn me. I'm not gonna believe you if you tell me it's hot. I need to stick my hand in there and I need to see that this shit's hot. Like, I need to know for myself. It was a wake up call, you know? Nobody ever has or ever will escape the consequences of their choices. For Malik Abdulhawk, his choices would lead him to a place that would change his life forever. Prison was his figurative slap in the face, but it's where his fitness journey would begin. A journey that would eventually take him to the doorstep of CrossFit. This is the story of Malik Abdulhawk, the specialist. Malik. Malik, nice yeah. to meet you, Malik. How you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Good. Because I'm a bodybuilder. Came from bodybuilding. I didn't know if I was going to be looked down on a little bit. You know, I didn't know. But that definitely wasn't the case. Everybody was really friendly and it was just all about the seminar. Bodybuilding never even was brought up. Ready, down and hold. Great. Sit back a half inch and chest up. Beautiful. Half inch deeper now. Now you're working hard. Stand. And reset. Tell those arms they got to wait. Okay, you got strong upper body, you wanna use it, you gotta tell them to wait. Wait until they feel all the way extended legs, they're gonna hand off to the arms. These guys gotta wait their turn, okay? Get set, ready, go. Boom, boom, much better, good, reset. My size and flexibility made me wanna, I didn't wanna use technique, I wanted to force everything. Ready, down and hold. I mean, bodybuilding has made me like damn near immobile. <laughs> it was, there's the bad side to everything, you know? Stand, who here has a, thinks that their shoulder flexibility is the issue for the overhead squats. Like I know how to sit down and do this, or I know how to lay down and do this, or I can stand up and do this. It made me look good, but you know, my hips are tight as fuck, like, you know, and everything else. Bodybuilding is about one thing, gaining muscular size and definition. That's not to say that bodybuilders don't work hard, because they do. But in order to attain their aesthetic goals, sacrifices are made and their level of fitness is limited. In essence, they are specialists. A specialist is somebody who has a pretty narrow application of their physical capabilities. For example, you take somebody that maybe is really proficient at running a marathon, and you could say they have a lot of endurance, but really only in running. If you get them rowing, cycling, they might not be as impressive as he thought because the application of that endurance is so narrow it can't really be used in other places. I mean, I always use the word just to be an all-around badass. Like, I just love that. Just being good at everything. I don't like just being limited to one thing. So fitness is kind of this adaptive activity that generally leads itself to other activities. Our specialty is not specializing. We are generalists by nature. What I'm gonna to talk to you about is what is fitness and our definition. It should be fairly clear that the fitness that CrossFit advocates and develops is deliberately broad, general, and inclusive. Combat, survival, many sports, and life reward this kind of fitness and on average, punish the specialist. Yeah, whatever I do, like, I don't know, every, I've always been this way. If I choose to do something, I kind of obsess over it. I get obsessed with whatever, whatever I do. I have an addictive personality, you know? The addictive personality is a gift and a curse. Good word for him is precocious, inquisitive, adventurous. That's Malik, that's Malik in a nutshell. This is Malik's father, David. When I was young, like my dad has always been to going to the gym. He's always trained like my whole life. I've always remember him going to the gym. A lot of years with uh, just driving iron. I started out uh, just lifting weights uh, in the neighborhood with the fellas. You know, I always, always wanted to be like him. You know, I always thought he was like the biggest dude in the world. I would always brag to all my friends, like my dad's so buff, you would not even imagine if you saw him. <laughs> yeah, I always wanted to be like that, you know, I wanted to be swole, I wanted to be like that, because he's like an old school iron driving type of dude. He wasn't really a, you know, competitive bodybuilder or anything. He just did it for the love of, you know, lifting heavy stuff. 
Malik was young enough that he doesn't remember his parents getting divorced. But in the years that followed, he struggled to find a sense of family. My parents did what they could for me, but you know, there was ups and downs just like in, in many other people's families and childhoods and uh, went to a lot of different schools, moved to a lot of different areas. I just wanted, I learned how to run away, you know, from the stuff that was going on at home. And so I feel like that, that was like a big part of me just wanting to be out all the time, never wanting to be at home ever. Reality is harsh to deal with sometimes, and if you can't deal with it, you find different ways, you know? Certain people feel it with different things, you know? Toxic relationships, some people feel it with buying a lot of stuff, you know, money, some people feel it with violence. I just feel it with drugs. I drank a lot, that was like the thing. I was drinking, then drinking would lead to everything. We'd do coke, I'd smoke a bunch of weed, do coke. You know, we messed around with meth. You know, heroin, everything. Yeah, we had our, me and the little group of people that I was with us pretty much have our hands in whatever. You know, they say like the drug addicts have an anthem and it's fuck it, you know, and so that's, I was just in full fuck it mode for a lot of years. I knew he was going to get in trouble. I see what you're doing and what's getting ready to happen is you're gonna, your life is going to get interrupted. You know you're, you know you're fucked. Like yeah. what's going through your mind at that point? I called my girlfriend at the time, and uh, I told her that the cops were behind us. That I was in the high speed, and it was at an end. And she, she knew what I left the house with that day. I never went anywhere with without my tools, you know, which was the guns and the drugs. And so all she had got was the phone call: "Hey, they're behind me, and it's over." And I had to hang up. Malik was charged with being a felon in possession of a firearm and was sentenced to three years in a state prison. He would do his time at Duell Vocational Institution in Tracy, California, a place once known as Gladiator School. Before serving out his term, Malik received some fatherly advice. Look, you did what you did, and now you gotta do your time. You gotta live here, okay? This is how you're gonna live here. You're gonna die on your feet, not on your knees. You're gonna embody this information, these books that I'm about to give you, and you're gonna feed your brain, and you're gonna exercise every day, every motherfucking day. That's what you're gonna do. Look at me, this is the life you chose. This is what you chose. This is how you gotta live it. You're living among terminators and predators up in here. You don't take any shit off anybody. See these people that work here, these guards? You give them their respect. If you gotta go to lockup for something you're doing here, you welcome lockup with open arms. Don't let them see you worry about getting locked up while you're locked up. This is the life you chose. You're gonna be here there will be people that have life, 50 years, two years, and none of them your friends. This is the life you chose. I love you. I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to answer the phone when you call. But this is the life you chose, man. And you're blessed right now because you got me and you got a date that you're going to come home. I'm gonna have to leave here in a few minutes, man. I already told you how you gotta walk this walk. You can go there and you can sit on your bunk and in your cell and you can watch TV and you can hustle joints and smoke weed and, you know, do your whole time blindly. But I, you know, associated with people who have been in there for like 30 years, 40 years, 35 years, 27 years. Been in there since they were 14 and they're 40 years old. They gave me a lot of good information and a lot of life, <laughs> life advice. You know, I was in there like, you know, I, I, with the attitude like, you know, I kept it real, blah, blah, blah. I'm just doing this time for whatever I, you know, and I had a one dude that said, you know, I've been here for 32 years because I kept it real, you know? And he said, I'm never going home. 
like I'm never going home. And that was like a wake up call for me for keeping it real. Malik would heed his father's advice, staying out of trouble and working out every single day. So I would take a deck of cards, uh, 52 cards, and I would just set it on the ground and I'd flip one card and do 20 push-ups. I'd walk to one side of my cell and then walk to the other and flip another card and then do 20 more push-ups. I did that till the deck is gone. It was a thousand push-ups. They would open up for yard and I would go out to yard and that's when I would do all my bar work. Uh, I do 40 sets of pull-ups. I do 10 sets wide overhand. I do 10 sets uh, close grip like this. Then I do 10 sets of 10 uh, underhand like this. And then I would do 10 sets like this. And then it would equal 40 sets. And so we would go back in our cells and blah, blah, blah throughout the day. And then when they opened up for night yard, I would go out there and do a lot of plyometric stuff. And I'd be doing like leapfrog jumps and like jump squats and uh, taking old t-shirts to the yard and filling it up with gravel, using it as weights and lunging the entire track. Every other day, Malik would run 10 miles. Since 1998, weightlifting has been banned in California state prisons. Inside, you have to get creative with your methods of working out. I would steal trash bags from medical and then I would go into my cell and fill them up with like 50 pounds of water. Yeah, and then I'd stick like a, a plunger. I'd wrap it in a sheet and stick a plunger through the sheet. And so it'd be like a 50 pound bag of water wrapped in a sheet. And then I'd stick a plunger through the sheet and then I'd, I'd, I'd do like 30 sets of curls. <laughs> did it ever break on you when you're doing that? Yeah, I flooded my cell, my cellies. They all hated me because I trained so much. <laughs> It's all about consistency because you do the same thing every day, no matter what. You eat the same thing every day. You train the same time, you train the same way. And the intensity is, out here you have lazy days at the gym. I'm just, uh, whatever today. Out in there, it's balls to the walls every day. It got me through. No, that's like the, that's what got me through there. Like, if it wasn't, if I couldn't work out, I don't know what would have been done. That's what, that's what got me through it all. Five, there it is, perfect. That was perfect. The weight on the heels, hips all the way back, six, nice. When did, did he start talking about uh, the potential career path that he's on now with being a personal trainer? Before he came home, I stressed to him that you need to learn the routines Learn them like it's the back of your hand, man. And uh, people will pay you, and pay you well, okay, to show them how to do what you do well. Ironically enough, he came in and he started uh, doing his calisthenics work here. He got a lot of people's attention. Uh, the gym owner uh, urged him to get his uh, certification. Uh, he got his certification, he got his insurance, and uh, he started getting his own clients. He walked down the street, talked to people, and used his personality to get his, uh, his own clients. He's a go-getter. As soon as I got out, I didn't have any clients or any like real social skills or anything, but I went and made like some business cards. I just had my name on it, and I would go over to Lake Merritt over here in Oakland, and I would just talk to people. Like, hey, uh, you look like you like to take care of yourself. Let me give you this card and blah, blah, blah. And I'd chop it up with them about training. Keeping the weight on the heel. When you come up, just squeeze everything in your lower body. Squeeze it all. There you go. Perfect. Flex it off. Let it go and flex it. Give me five more. Five. Perfect. Four. Nice. Three. There it is. Come on. Last one. Lock it out. Good job. Perfect set. So the Numbercrane has lidocaine in it, and you're not, you don't have any problem with Novocaine, lidocaine, anything like that. Okay, mm -hmm. you guys are the deadest and had shots in the mouth. Yeah. Do you mind if I clean with alcohol and do this while you're? Yeah, it's all good. Got to multitask here. That tattoo is just a reflection of my past purely. It's just a pure reflection. It's not anything that I currently believe in or support. This is how I was living at the moment. 
as Malik works to reset his life, there's one permanent reminder of his past that continues to haunt him. Tattoos usually tell a story. I was into guns and so I got a bullet on me. Is that something you're gonna keep forever then? Like a reminder? You can get it. Fuck no. <laughs> yeah, that one's gotta go. <laughs> that one's gotta go. I've been at an interview before and said, we really want you, but that bullet on your face, dude, is just too intense. I feel like it's gonna hurt. I'm not tripping. Like the pain of the laser isn't gonna even compare to the pain of like the rejection and the judgment and all the other bullshit, you know, that comes along with the tattoo, so I think it's a fair trade, if you ask me. Malik will require multiple laser treatments before the tattoo is completely removed. Okay, we're all done. I'm just gonna ice that. Can you hold that for us? Look. And you can see the white, it looks perfect. How you doing? Good. <laughs> All right, make sure you're ready to pick up the bar. 20 front squats. So be smart with this. Remember, after this, you've got front rack lunges and power cleans. Once a specialist, in more ways than one, Malik was indeed punished by life. He had to make the mistakes he made in order to get to this point in his life. A fitness journey that began in confinement expands with his freedom. With the addition of CrossFit to his fitness tool belt, he looks to the future with hope and confidence. I want to do a couple more bodybuilding shows. Um, I, want to I, I want to do CrossFit. I want to compete in CrossFit. And I also would like to do a powerlifting meet. And I want to own my own gym eventually and uh, basically have uh, programs for kids at the gym after school, things like that. And have just have it shut down for a certain amount of time for after school stuff. And uh, that's like my ultimate goal, is just to have a gym that I can help people. Like I have a little motto and it's that I just, I want to live to give. So my end goal is to use fitness in whichever area of fitness I need to use it to give as much as I can. So what's next for Malik? Oh man, uh, I, I, <laughs> I wish that I was in control of that, <laughs> okay? Uh, his only enemy is himself. Our only enemy is ourself, okay? It's not anyone else's fault, so uh, he's the master of his destiny right now. Mm -hmm.